three, two, one, move it. Autonomy is now ready to be used in major conflicts. The U.S. is very interested in adapting the technology for dangerous missions or, or missions that um, don't have enough priority necessarily to have a human crew at risk. My lab and, and this particular project is looking at a low-profile vessel, which is a vessel that's designed to kind of hide by being very close to the surface of the water. We have the pressure sensors. We have uh... Vessels like this are used by drug cartels to move drugs around the world. So for those applications, we want to be able to understand how to detect the vessels better. But militaries are also interested in this technology if they have to move something covertly around the world. They'd like to understand how to design these vessels successfully. So you just have to stop the host and then you can stop that disconnect. We've seen in, in the war in Ukraine, uh, especially the Ukrainian Navy has used autonomous vessels successfully in the Black Sea to attack Russian vessels in harbor and in coastal regions. So we have an ability to, to use autonomy in new ways. Go ahead, 25. There's interest from both the Navy and the commercial world about potentially reducing the number of mariners on board to make the vessel simpler and more efficient. Ready? In this project, we're trying to understand the basics of, of the resistance, of, of how hard it is to move through the water, both in calm water and with waves, and also how it might move differently than a conventional looking vessel. Run, 26. In the long term, we're hoping uh, that this would lead to the more successful design of vessels for, for the U.S. Navy and an improved ability for the U.S. government to detect vessels like this that might be operated by others. We have a lot of work to do before we're ready to say we can make a transoceanic commercial ship fully autonomous.